to see you guys on this uh, day of worship. So before we begin, let us do our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And starting today, again, I'll be using the chalkboard, which means uh, spiritual summits must be spiritually agile to adapt to the changes. Right? So today's title is The Concentration. What kind of concentration is it? It's to change myself. Right? And if you look at today's passage, right, God has shown this light onto your heart so that you can really know and understand the glory of God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. That means as soon as you believe in Jesus Christ, the light of Christ is upon you. That means the image of God that is within you has been restored through Jesus Christ, right? So today, may you really restore this concentration that really changes your life. The answer is simple. All you have to do is focus on Jesus Christ with unstoppable faith, like the Syrophoenician woman, right? She knew that the only way that can change one's destiny, that can resolve one's spiritual problem, that can resolve and block the disaster of this age it's nothing but Jesus Christ. That is the very reason why she restored this unstoppable faith before God. I want you to really have this. Do not hesitate. But every single moment of your life, may you concentrate and really enjoy the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Then all Satan's partisan in your field will be absolutely broken down. I want you to become the witnesses of seeing that happening in your life. Right? When you shine the light, darkness disappears. Right? Simple. It's a spiritual science. When you shine this light, darkness will be gone. Right? So why don't we bless each other by saying, let us restore unstoppable faith. Right? Right. So what is it that really st stops you from enjoying Christ? What is it that really like, hinders you from going deeper within Christ? Right? Sometimes it might be your thoughts. In today's conclusion, the only thing that limits the power of God in our lives is our thoughts, our prejudices, our biases. Right? God has no limits. God has no limitation. He transcends time and space. However, the only thing that underestimates, that limits the power of God is our thoughts. Right? May you discard all your disbelief. May you discard all your unbelief and concerns, and may you really be at peace that Christ has finished everything. Right? So in the intro, the pulpit message from last week was titled, Do Not Let Your Hearts Harden. Right? Think about it. When your hearts get hardened, that means you become spiritually insensitive. When this happens, you are sensitive to the words of people. You are sensitive to the atmosphere. You are sensitive to the eye sights or eye contacts that you make in the church. However, you will be spiritually insensitive to what's going on in the spiritual reality. You only focus on what is visible and what is physical. Right? However, our senior pastor John gave us the immediate answer. The only way you can be awake spiritually is through prayer. Right? Through prayer, can you be spiritually awake? You can be spiritually alert. You will be sensitive to the spiritual things when you truly believe that when you pray, heavenly angels are mobilized to you. When you pray, the light of Christ is shown upon you. When you pray, the kingdom of God will be established. Those who know the spiritual reality can pray. Right? Those who really know the spiritual realm can really go deeper into prayer. Right? So we need to be awake by prayer. So last week, Pastor Zhang mentioned this. Where there is no prayer, only people work. On the other hand, where there is prayer, God is absolutely at work. I want 
YEM to become the place where God works. I don't want this place, I don't want this ministry to become the platform where people just talk and talk and talk. Right? I want YEM to become the place where the triune God is leading our ministry. In order to have this experience, we need to restore prayer. Prayer. Right? And prayer is a spiritual science. That means when you truly pray, holding on to the covenant in the name of Jesus Christ, you will absolutely receive clear answers. Why? Assistant Pastor, how can you say so? Because it is written in the Bible. Where? In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. It says this. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. Since the first day you resolved to pray before God, your prayer is answered, right? That's how scientific prayer is. As soon as you make that resolution, I will be praying. I will build my baptismal prayer within my field. As soon as you make that resolution, God already hears your prayer and begins to answer you, right? Spiritual science. And if you look at Revelations chapter 8, verse 3 to 5, right? God sends heavenly angels whenever you pray. God sends heavenly angels to remnant's prayer. And these angels will bring all these prayers into the golden vessels, and they'll bring them up to the heaven. That means all your prayers will be heard by God. Right? As soon as you have this absolute faith, when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God will absolutely hear it. Right? So prayer is a spiritual science. And those who know prayer, those who are awake by prayer, right, they do not listen to the voice of people. Rather, they listen to the voice of God. Voice of God. Because they believe only the word of God stands forever. Where is it recorded in the Bible? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8, right? My, my promises can be changed. Your promises can be changed. All your sayings can be changed according to different situations. However, the word of God under any circumstances will last forever. So those who are awake by prayer, they do not heed to the words of people. Rather, they listen to the word of God because that is the only thing that stands forever. I want you to be sensitive to the word of God. Right? I want you to really concentrate on the Word of God because that is the only thing that stands forever. Right? You don't want to spend your life, you don't want to spend your money into something that is fleeting or temporary. Right? That means you will, law, you will lose all your properties. Right? You want to invest your money, your time, your energy into something that is eternal, that is stable. And the Bible says that is the Word of God. Right? And those who are awake by prayer, right, they do not use humanism. Right? Remnants, if you really know prayer, you do not use humanism. Rather, you wait for God's perfect time schedule. Those who really know and enjoy prayer, they can wait for God's time schedule. Right? They are not hasty just because they don't receive answers right away. But they wait for God's perfect time time schedule. Because Isaiah chapter 60 verse 22, it says, the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord and in its time I will do it swiftly. Right? When his time schedule is here, God will absolutely fulfill it. All you have to do is Align your life with God's absolute time schedule. All you have to do is enjoy this prayer and wait for the kingdom of God to be established. When do you have to move? When the kingdom of God is visible. Right? If you can't see the kingdom of God in your field, you shouldn't do anything. All you have to do is enjoy the accurate gospel of Jesus Christ. Until when? Until the kingdom of God is established. 
that is the standard of your measurement in your actions, in your decisions, and in all the choices that you make. Right? If you can't see the kingdom of God, however, the reason why many Christians make mistakes is because they do everything in advance before the kingdom of God is established. Okay? There is a mismatch between the fulfillment of the word and my action. For example, God says, stop, but you are so hasty to do something because that is your nature, that is your imprint, that is your root. And God says, Go and proceed, but because out of fear, out of curiosity, out of uncertainty, you don't make any actions. Even though the word of God says, yes, go and proceed. There is a mismatch between the fulfillment of the word and your action and your life. And all you're saying is complaining. God never answers my prayer. There is no word fulfillment in my life. But you need to check up on yourself, whether you're within the stream, the flow of the word. Right? That is the walk of faith. Checking myself whether I am deviating from the word of God or I am within the flow, the stream of the word. And the second thing that Senior Pastor John mentioned is we need to restore absolute faith. Not just average faith, but absolute faith. Right? Absolute faith. What kind of faith is it? In John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus Christ promised to his disciples, I will be leaving you soon, but that is much better for you because another counselor, another holy counselor will be sent to you and he will be with you forever. Right? You need to have this absolute faith in the fact that the triune God is with you forever. Right? Are you within dire situations? Do you have so many problems that you can't resolve on your own? But take heart because the Holy Spirit is with you and guiding you and working upon you. Why? Not because you're smart, but because you are a child of God. You have this light of Christ within you. And think about today's passage. God made this light of Christ right, shine upon your heart, upon your soul, upon your body, upon your every single cell in your body. Right? If that happens, you will be restored, right? And John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus Christ says, In this world, you will have trouble. Just because you are saved doesn't mean that you will have no problem at all. But Jesus himself said, In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Right? You need to have this absolute faith in this. Christ, who has overcome everything, is with me through the Holy Spirit. Right? When you really restore this faith, forces of darkness will be completely broken down. Satan cannot attack you if you have this absolute faith. Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. Right? The resurrected Christ says... I will be with you to the ends of the earth. Right? Please do not be discouraged because God is with you to the ends of the earth. God, who can create everything out of nothing, is with you. He says he will be with you forever. Right? Nothing on this earth is guaranteed forever. But the blessing of salvation that has been given to you, that is the only thing that is guaranteed forever. Because God is with you to the ends of the earth. Not just for months, not just for years, but to the ends of the earth. Right? You need to have this assurance, the conviction regarding your salvation. Right? However, because we have physical body, even if we have been saved, if we are not careful, it is easy for us to go back to our old imprints, roots, and natures. That is why, just like today's title, we need to restore this concentration that changes myself, right? Then what kind of concentration is it? But prior to having this concentration, you need to know something in advance. There is something that you need to know first. That is, the problem that existed even before eternity.
there is a problem that existed even before eternity, even before creation. Even before you were born, there is a severe problem that brings every mankind into this destruction and disasters. And this problem is only recorded in the Bible. And specifically in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. This severe problem is recorded in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Right? And it says, before creation, the world was filled with darkness. Right? Satan uses this strategy of darkness. Right? According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, only mankind is a spiritual being. Right? Because we possess the image of God. However, Satan uses this strategy of darkness to blind our spiritual eyes. So that we won't be able to see the spiritual realm. Right? You are very quick and sensitive to the things of the world. But you are very insensitive right, to the things of God. Because Satan is utilizing the strategy of darkness so that he can blind your eyes, spiritual eyes. So you won't be able to see what is going on in the spiritual reality. You only focus on what to eat, what to wear, where to go, what I'm going to do over the weekend. That's all you think about when this darkness comes upon you. That is the strategy that Satan always uses. Right? How pitiful is that? Spiritual being without any spiritual strength, they're only chasing after the physical things. Right? They are just living their lives at the level of animals. Like, think about the animals. They only, what they do is killing each other, like, you know, like stealing food from others. They're competing each other for their superiority, right? If you are completely dark spiritually, that's all you do. All you think about is the physical things. What I'm going to do this weekend, what I'm going to do over the vac vacation, what I'm going to do, this and that, right? That's what Satan uses. Even to Christians, Satan uses this strategy. Even if you're saved, even if you go to church, even if you devote yourself to pastors and remnants, right? Once you are covered with darkness, even if you come to church, you can't see the spiritual things. You're only sensitive to the things of people and of the world. And the second problem is the world is covered with chaos, You, you know what chaos means, right? Chaos, right? Destruction, you become chaotic, which means you can't distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. You can't discern what is for the sake of God and what is for the sake of yourself. You can't really have this discernment between the things of God and things of the world. You just only chase after what you can touch, what you can experience, and what you can feel. Everyone is within chaos, right? Which means they can't have this spiritual concentration on God. They only think about oh, what they say about me, what she says about me, what he says about me. That's it. However, they lose hold of this spiritual concentration on God. As a child of God, as a spiritual being, we need to have this concentration on God. If not, we will be obsessed with something else. Right? Spiritual beings must concentrate on God. But if you lose that time, but if you lose that concentration, you're bound to be obsessed with something else. Something that is introductory. Something trivial. Something fleeting. Something small. And that's where you lose and waste all your time, all your energy, all your devotion. Because you're distracted and lured by the things of the world. And this strategy, Satan is using it even right now, right? Whenever you make choices, whenever you make decisions, Satan will bring you into chaos so that you won't be able to discern what is for the sake of the kingdom of God or not, right? That's why you need to have this concentration where the light of Christ is shown upon you. Think about it. The only way they can drive out darkness is nothing but the light, 
and the light is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Right. And the third strategy that Satan uses is emptiness, void. And in Korean, it's kongho. It's more specifically uh, explained. Kongho. No power. No strength at all. Kongho. Because you are disconnected with God. Right? Even if you go to good restaurants, eat good food, you're surrounded by good people, your friends, right? You wear fancy, you know, clothes. That can fill your spiritual void because we are spiritual beings, right? And because you are within darkness, you are within complete chaos, ultimately, you can become the spiritual summit because you are within the spiritual incompetence. We call that yongjok munungyok. Physically, you may seem like you have power, you have positions at your company, but spiritually, you are incompetent because you can receive spiritual strength from God because you are disconnected. Spiritual incompetence. I want you to come out of this spiritual incompetence by being given the spiritual strength that God gives through worship. Amen? When you restore this concentration where the light of Christ is shown upon you, you can come out from this spiritual incompetence. Rather, you will become the spiritual summit who will give the absolute answer that Jesus is the Christ. And that is the reason why God has called you even before creation. Right? In Christ. In Christ. That's why, because we are within this darkness, chaos, and emptiness, God has given us the immediate answer, and that is Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Let there be light, and there was light. When the light is shown upon darkness, darkness has no choice but to flee. Because you possess the light of Christ within you, wherever you go, forces of darkness will be broken down. That is your authority. That's why you are called the spiritual ambassador of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is shine this light. That's why you are a watch person, watchman, in your field, in your family, and in your respective region. This Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 talks about the light. What kind of light is it? It is different from the light that comes from the fluorescent light bulb here. It is the light of life. It is the light of creation. When this light comes upon you, you will be given new life. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. Because Jesus Christ is the light of life. When you are within this light, you will be given new life, eternal life in Christ. And as soon as you are within the light of Christ, in 1 Peter, Chapter 2, verse 9, it says, you are the children of light. All you have to do is shine this light, this marvelous light that has been given to you. Right? God has entrusted this mission to you guys to shine the light of Christ upon your school, upon your workplaces, upon your family. Right? As long as you hold on to this light, darkness cannot attack you. Okay? I want you to really build the partisan of the true light of Jesus Christ within your field. Now, you guys are the spiritual ambassadors. Why don't we bless each other by saying, you are the spiritual ambassador. You are the spiritual ambassador. Right? Don't forget who you are. That is your identity. Right? Physically, you are a minor living in Korea, but spiritually, you are a spiritual ambassador. You are a temple of God because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Right? And that is the second thing that you need to keep in mind. As soon as you come into this light, what happens is you will be given a new identity and new authority. New identity and authority. That means 
as you already know, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16. Don't you know that you are the temple of God because the Holy Spirit dwells within you, right? Physically, there might not be any changes in your life, but spiritually, as soon as you come into the light of Christ, you are a holy temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells within you, right? But if you lose hold of this faith in the fact that you are a holy temple of God, what happens is you will go back and fall into Genesis chapter 3. Now think about it. If you lose, if you don't have conviction regarding this fact that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, when you lose hold of this conviction, this assurance, what happens is you will go back and fall into Genesis chapter 3. Me centeredness. Me centeredness. Everything that you do, everything that you plan is centered around yourself because you don't believe that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Right? You need to have this conviction, this assurance that once you are in the light of Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Amen? Right. 1 Corinthians 3.16 and the book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Right? Even now, the Holy Spirit is guiding you through the word. That's why we come to church to worship God. That's why on every Sunday we come to church. That's why I'm asking every single one of you to be successful in the second service because God wants to give you the tremendous blessing through our senior pastor, Jung. Right? Not just for YEM pulpit, but I want every single one of you to be successful in the main service. Right? We need to follow the same stream of the pulpit. But, but if you don't believe in this, if you don't follow the word of God, what happens is you will fall into Genesis chapter 6, which means you will do whatever you like, right? Based on your thoughts, based on your emotions, and based on your experiences, right? Think about it. Genesis chapter 6 is the age of Nephilim, right? There is no God because everyone is doing whatever they like based on their thoughts, emotions, and feelings, that's what happens to Christians too. If you lose hold of this spiritual reality, if you do not follow the word of God, what happens is when you come to church, when you do the work of God, you will do so with your own thoughts. You will never ever find the answer from the word. That's what happens. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is the only power that God has promised. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. This must become your only method in your life. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Receiving this guidance of the Holy Spirit. If not, you will fall into Genesis chapter 11. If you do not follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if you do not receive the filling of the Holy Spirit in your life, what happens is you will do everything according to your own power. That means you study, you do your businesses, and you try to resolve your problems with your own power. You do not bring it back to Jesus Christ. You try to solve it on your own. However, ultimately, you will face limitations because we are humans. From that point on, your life, your walk of faith will be completely shaken. Once you face your limitations. That's why we need to receive the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And that must become your sole and only method in your walk of faith and in your life. That is the only way that can transcend Satan's strategy of Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. Right? And God has given us a new authority. And that is Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Jesus said, I will give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. And it is also known as the authority of the earth. God has given you the authority of the earth. In Korean, it is called the Tangye Guanze. God has given you 
the authority of the earth to trample on scorpions and snakes and really overcome the power of the enemy. And God has also given you the authority of heaven according to Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14. Wherever you go, heavenly angels will be mobilized to you. We call that Hanere Gwanze, right? When you have this faith in God, when you have this faith that Jesus Christ is within you, wherever you go, you can enjoy the spiritual world where the heavenly angels are mobilized to you because this authority of the heaven and earth has been given to you, right? Remnants, can you repeat after me? Tange guanze, hanel guanze has been given to you, right? All you have to do is believe in this, right? That means all the authority has been given to you. However, if you don't enjoy and utilize these authorities, you won't be able to change the culture of darkness. You won't be able to overcome the culture of darkness. Rather, you will be influenced by the culture of the world. That's why in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, you used to follow the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Right? If you don't use this authority, you have no choice but to follow 공중권세 잡은 자 because you are not using this authority. Right? Please, as a child of God, all you have to do is use the authority that God has given to you. How? The only key is the name of Jesus Christ. Right? And according to your identity, your background will be determined. Your background. Your background. And there is something that is guaranteed. What is your background? Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Your citizenship is in heaven. Even though our physical citizenship might be different, but our spiritual citizenship is the same. It is the citizenship of heaven. Right? Once you are saved, the throne becomes your background. The kingdom of God becomes your background. That's why in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, the resurrected Christ gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives and he talked about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God for 40 days. Right? Because that is your background. And Jesus wanted his disciples to really realistically enjoy the kingdom of God in their fields. Right? All you have to do is enjoy and establish the kingdom of God in your field. And that is the greatest answer that you can receive. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. This is your background, right? Do not be shaken. Do not be dismayed, okay? Do not be discouraged because the kingdom of God will be upon you. And what is guaranteed? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, right? Once again, I will be with you to the ends of the earth, right? Then when is the end of the earth, right? Aliyah, when is the end of the earth? When? When is it? Is it like 2050? 2070? 3000? When is the end of the earth? No one will really know, but God has given us the answer. Yes. Right, the end will come when this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the entire world. That means our life must be aligned with world evangelization. That's why today, Senior Pastor Jung said, our church is established for the sake of evangelism and missions. And without this, there is a reason for our church to revive and to remain. If you lose hold of this mission, there is no reason for our ministry to survive. Right? If you lose hold of this mission in your life, there is no reason for you to live. Because God has called you as an evangelist. If you just chase after food, money, and success, God has no choice but to take away your life. Right? However, 
as long as you have this mission, you will continue to live. And the pastor says, 생즉명. The reason why you're living today because there is a mission for you to accomplish. Right? The reason why God has allowed this another day for you is for you to carry out your mission. Right? And in Korean, it is called 생즉명. Not just for your family. Not just for yourself. For the sake of world evangelization. And conclusion, when you correctly enjoy the gospel and when you really enjoy your identity, your authority, and your background in your daily lives, what happens is, without even you realizing, absolute partisan will be established within you. And this partisan is consisted of three things. There are three things in a partisan. The first is a platform, right? Platform is like airport, right? In order to come to Korea, you need to go to an airport in your home country, right? And what happens is your ticket says you need to go to gate number seven. You need to go to gate number 16, right? You need to go to gate number 50 to get on the plane which is bound for Korea. Same thing, spiritually, right? Having this absolute partisan, like you becoming a platform means you can give the absolute way of Jesus Christ to others who are wandering spiritually in the field. Think about it, right? The platform, the airport says you need to go to gate number seven to go to the Philippines, Ayana. You need to go to gate number 11 to go back to Texas, United States, right? The platform gives you the way, the correct way, spiritually too. Once you become a partisan, once you become a platform, you can give the absolute unique answer and the way that Jesus is the Christ. Right? And what's inside of partisan? It's a watchtower. Right? And the main reason for watchtower is established is because it has to shine the light. Shine the light. Light. And platform is providing a correct way. And the third thing that is inside of Bartizan is antenna. Right? In order to relay the things of God so that they can truly enjoy only Christ, only the kingdom of God, and only the filling of the Holy Spirit. Once you really enjoy these three things, what happens is you will be able to overcome the three strategies of Satan. Think about it. When you shine the light, darkness will be gone, right? When you truly give the absolute way of Christ, those who are within chaos can come out of it. And once you provide the things of God to those who are wandering, right, they won't be able to they won't be remaining inside of spiritual incompetence, but they will come out of it and they will become the spiritual summit. Right? That's what it means to become the absolute partisan in your field. Once you raise this, Satan's three strategies will be completely broken down. I want you to become the witnesses of this and really testify of the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, May we open our spiritual eyes to see that the field is within darkness, chaos, and emptiness. May we have this unstoppable faith to shine the light of Christ onto such field. And may we enjoy the spiritual identity, authority, and the background that God has given to us as a child of God so that we can raise the absolute partisan that can give the absolute way of Jesus Christ and shine the light onto the field that is covered with darkness. In just Christ, and we prayed. Amen. Amen.